Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and this is yet another video review. Today I'll be looking at the ABIT KT7 RAID motherboard along with the T-Bird 1.1 GHz CPU. So let's now swing over and have a look at the motherboard. Oh, and remember folks, these videos are completely unedited and these are only my opinions. What you're looking at here is the motherboard actually installed uh, inside of the case. This motherboard, if you're familiar with the ABIT KT7 and my video review on that board, is pretty similar in essence. The board is a similar layout. It has six PCI slots and one ISA slot. Of course, it has the same heatsink on the motherboard as the uh, other mo motherboard, the KT7. And I'm using the FOP32 heatsink and fan on the 1.1 GHz CPU. The only thing that I've changed really is an update on the um, both the South Bridge and North Bridge. Now, the North Bridge gives you the ability, of course, to support higher overclocks and support the newer chips that are coming out from AMD, uh, namely, you know, the 1.3s, 1.4s, 1.5s, etc., etc. So it supports the front side bus of 133, 100% uh, stable, I might add. And I actually have a 1.1, which is a non-DDR CPU, and I actually have it 9 times 5 with the multiplier times 133, which gives me around 1.3 gigahertz. And the um, so it's very high for for um, for a non-DDR CPU. In any case, let's go on here. The other chip that's been updated is a Southbridge, which now it gives support for four, uh, sorry, eight IDE devices. All of those can be uh, ATA 100, um, and also it gives you, of course, the ability for four of them being RAID and four other uh, IDE devices, whatever they may be, a CD-ROM drive, um, other hard drives, and so on and so forth. So, with the addition of and updates of the Northbridge and Southbridge chips on this motherboard, it's uh, quite a good motherboard. Now, the price point on this is very high. It's a 200 and around 280 bucks, um, 270 to 280 dollars Canadian. So that's quite expensive, I think, for a motherboard. Um, whether or not I should recommend going to this motherboard if you already have the KT7, yes and no. Um, if you want to upgrade CPUs in the future, in the next few months, upcoming higher um, CPUs, or even wanting to overclock higher than the KT7 RAID will let you go. Um, the KT7 RAID will uh, normally let you go around 13, uh, 20, and that's what I found anyhow. If you can get good memory, you can go much higher, of course, on the KT7 motherboard, but the KT7A is much more overclockable in a sense with the new T-Bird CPUs. And uh, if you notice here, I have actually voltage modded, modded this CPU, this motherboard, sorry. Now, one thing I did notice about this motherboard is the resistors, it's the same connection as before on the KT7 motherboard. However, the voltage, the resistors, the K for the resistors is now 20, I found the best one, the best K would be around 24.4. It gives you a maximum voltage overclocking ability of around uh, 2.11 volts. So going from 1.92, which is the board without the mod, and going from 2.11 is quite a, a decent jump uh, with a simple modification of the 24-ish K ohm resistor to this motherboard. So, and again, if you're doing this to the motherboard, um, whether it be this one, the KT7A, or the KT7, and the KT7 would require uh, a little bit less of a, a K ohm resistor. However, if you're doing this, be very careful. Uh, take your time, relax, and um, I recommend taking the motherboard uh, first of all out of the case and do it before you actually install it. It's best thing to do, and be very, very careful when doing it. Whether uh, it be burning yourself with the iron or uh, burning up the motherboard or slipping and then just ruining 
the whole thing. Of course, that would void the warranty as well. If you look over here, this is where the memory is, three bays of memory. And what's buried underneath my fingers here is the e, uh, IDE devices, uh, the RAID drives, and so on. Uh, I have actually two 60 gig quantum ATA drives, and I'm using Windows 2000, and I have them set up as one drive, so one my C drive is now 120 gigabytes. I have um, most of my PCI slots filled, um, and I have no conflicts whatsoever, so it's certainly a good thing, and I didn't uh, either in the KT7 uh, motherboard. So um, one thing I did notice though, sometimes I do have some issues uh, with PCI 3. Uh, maybe if you're having some problems, you might want to try taking a card out of this slot and uh, see if it works for you. Of course the regular plugins for this motherboard, there is no sound or uh, joystick port on this motherboard. Um, it has a mouse, PS2, it has the keyboard PS2, two USBs. Actually, this motherboard comes with an addition. You can put four USB ports on this motherboard. So that's kind of a cool feature, considering all the USB devices that's coming out these days. It has a printer device, a printer uh, port, as well as two COM ports. So there you have it. Just a quick overview of what the uh, differences between the KT7 um, motherboard and the KT7A is the uh, again the North Bridge and South Bridge chips have been updated and uh, it gives you the ability of going all uh, hard drives being or ID devices being uh, ultra DMA uh, 100 and uh, this board of course gives you the ability to do front side bus of 133 that's supporting the new um, DDR CPUs that are coming on the market these days supporting of course higher overclocks as well as higher um, default megahertz. Now I give this board a 9 out of 10 um, for the simple fact something there is an issue with this board if you have a fan that is not connected directly into the motherboard you're going to have a problem because if it doesn't detect at least I think it's like a two or three hundred um, spin ratio RPM on a fan plugged directly into the motherboard then it's not going to work for you the system will not boot up at all so you need to have which is silly I think this is a really silly thing that ABIT did but uh, if you have an FOP uh, 38 for an example and if you plug it directly into your power supply um, power feeds cables then <laughs> you're not going to boot this thing will not boot up um, so you're going to need to get, if you don't already have uh, someone else's fan or another fan of some sort, boot the system up. You can flash the BIOS to the WZ BIOS and you'll be fine and go back to your original heat sink and fan. But I mean, it's kind of silly because well, what you gotta go ahead and buy another uh, heat sink and fan just to plug it in and just to put it on and get it up and flash the BIOS and then come back and put your old fan back on heat sink. I think it's silly, but that's okay. I guess they're trying to protect the. Um, the CPUs from over, uh, overclocking as well as uh, I guess heat damage and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm sure this will be changed in the uh, later releases of this board. Uh, again, that's the WW BIOS in this board, which is default uh, shipment on this board. So if you do or or are thinking about getting this board and you're having problems getting it started, then check the fan that has to be directly plugged right into the motherboard. Um, so that's the only issue with this motherboard. Overall, this motherboard is excellent. The only other thing that is kind of a turnoff, which would be maybe a turnoff for many people, is the price. It's around $270 to $280 Canadian. This is a very, very expensive board. However, it does offer you the RAID functions, all the eight, uh, eight uh, IDE devices. It offers you them all at uh, 100 so it's, it's a good board. Um, I think it's worth uh, the money, but uh, some might disagree on that. Uh, it's certainly a, a very overclockable board as well. I got the 1.1 gigahertz non-DDR at 9 times 5, uh, 9.5 times 133 and plus 3, so 136, which gives me around 1.3 gigahertz overclock on a non-DDR 1.1 gigahertz T-Bird. And it's actually at default voltage, which is 1.7 on this uh, T-Bird 
and I'm not using the voltage modification at all for obviously for this CPU. The voltage mod is really good for people who have Durons. Durons love voltage and they certainly like it for the simple fact that if you uh, crank up the voltage on them, you'll get much, much higher overclocks. So there you have it. I give this uh, motherboard and um, the CPU combo a 9 out of 10, um, and the reason, of course, I've stated. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Please check back next week, and I will have another video review. And please remember to check out my website at www.thevideogeek.com.